conversation around um, uh, Kenya's foreign policy. Mm -hmm. There were criticisms of uh, perhaps how we treat each other as the East African community. What would you have to say uh, to such an incident of, uh, you know, one Kiza Besije being snatched off, you know, just on the streets of Nairobi or in one of our estates? Well, several things and several ways to look at it. Please. One is we do have a policy. We do have a foreign policy and we do have pillars that guide their foreign policy, which was developed by Uhuru and Amina, Amina Mohammed. Uh, the president has just amended that policy. Uh, you cannot take a foreign policy uh, like a laundry. You know, you wash it, you know, so that all the colors are off. Uh, American foreign policy has stayed for 200 years. Uh, we just consistent. You must be, uh, because how we deal with the U.S., how we deal with China, need to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And the point is, you're coming to East Africa, East Africa community, how we deal with each other, uh, uh, the protocol, uh, follow the, uh, the law, uh, you know, as, as govern uh, the East Africa. And therefore, you cannot do what happened. You cannot uh, go and kidnap anybody from another state and, and then walk away with it and claim that uh, you know, it was kind of right or anything, or in collusion uh, be w with one of our senior people. It cannot and should not be accepted at all. All right. Now, um, in the president's speech, uh, he mentioned uh, some geopolitical challenges, including uh, some, you know, well-known global economic shocks. Would you care to tell us in brief, um, how well has Kenyan, uh, Kenya positioned herself diplomatically to navigate such issues and protect its economic interests? Um, Victor, allow me to just outline a few pillars, Please. you know, so that the, the public can understand. Please. The, we came up with the first, by the way, this is the first time uh, in uh, 20, uh, 2014, first time that Kenya has had a written uh, pillar, a written foreign policy. Number one is peace and diplomacy. Number two is economic diplomacy. And number three, something I've been working on for a very long time, di diaspora policy. Uh, uh, which was ingrained. Environmental, which is really uh, futuristic. And then we have cultural policy. The Ruto uh, uh, has changed some things, you know, so that uh, we need to settle down so we know what is it uh, uh, that they are talking about. That is something called digital diplomacy. And, and I think that digital diplomacy can be sort of woven within the bigger picture instead of separating it as itself as a policy. So this is something we'll be talking about. Then it came with the global health uh, diplomacy, which, which I think is, is important, uh, but, but health need to be really woven, particularly on domestic, mm -hmm. and then how international relation feedback. But otherwise, he remained uh, pretty much with the pillar. Uh, one of them is the climate, uh, what was called climate, uh, uh, was called uh, environmental change to climate, which is, which is fine. Uh, that economic policy remained. Uh, global peace and engagement is very critical. Uh, regional diplomacy is important. Now, let me say another thing. Kenya, when you look at the whole continent of Africa, is in a very enviable position. But we are more critics within Kenya itself, who are beating up on, on Kenya image and everything. Is that so? No, no question about it. We are number seven uh, uh, largest economy uh, in the continent of Africa. Uh, we are the most powerful country militarily in East and Central Africa. And then when you look at, uh, uh, today we were engaging with, the, with another issue which are, which are looking at startup, uh, startup companies. Uh, when you compare Rwanda and Tanzania, 
The start, startup is failing at 74%. Kenya is failing at 24%. You know, the, the, the hubs that we the have incubation in- The incubation hub. Incubation hub you have in Nairobi, the coffee. Uh, you, you see that in Nairobi. Kenyans are ready to step forward and create those hubs.